Okay, let me do the official uh, kind of announce. Okay, this I'll be quiet. The, yeah, number five of uh, <laughs> Studio Photography Inside. I mean, the fifth uh, whatever, broadcast. And uh, yeah, as usual, we'll be talking a little bit about uh, images we got uh, with Dave and uh, obviously with all the rest of stuff. Like Ron got this half of the glass. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, who's first? Pardon me, Alex? Who's first, Dave? You think you're going to first? Oh, uh, yeah, sure. What the heck? Okay, yeah. Let me show the image. It's funny. It's kind of <laughs> all about glass. Uh, let me share my desktop. Okay, so here is the image. Do we see it? Right? Yep, yep. Okay. And... Uh, yeah, pretty interesting. Plus, it's kind of moving stuff. All the splashes. So they tell us probably start from the idea, right? I mean, the, because it's always something behind the shot. I know. Well, you know, in, in shots like this, um, this is actually something that happened after an idea. Um, what what I had originally done with this glass is I took it, I hit it with a torch. Uh, melted the side where the hole is now. Um, and I wanted to take a mannequin finger and sort of push it into the glass like it was actually bending it. Um, but after a whole bunch of tries, um, all that kept happening was the glass broke. Um, so then I just went down to, okay, so the glass broke, let me try to make something out of this. Um, you know, with splash shots like this, I, I'd love to sit back and say that everything was all thought out and planned and it's, it's exactly what I wanted, but, you know, it's so chaotic. Um, so I just thought, okay, pretty cool. I got that hole down in the bottom of the glass. Let's just dump some water in it and see, mm -hmm. uh, uh, see how it would look. So, you know, I've got a couple of blue gels going in the, in the background and actually below it. Uh, and then put another light off to the right of it to cut some highlights in anything that would come out. Mm -hmm. um, and then just poured and shot. And this was actually the second click of the shutter and I was done. Uh, mm -hmm. The strange thing was, though, when I, uh, when I was done with it and actually got it onto the computer and looked at it, I saw immediately that it looked like a face with, you know, just all the stuff coming out of its mouth. Um, so... Uh, w I'd, I'd love to say that I can take credit for the thought in this one, but no, this was just happenstance. Um, just a really, really uh, uh, lucky thing. Um, and actually, um, I don't know if any of you guys are familiar with a uh, website called 1x.com. Um, really great site, really great photographs. I mean, just amazing stuff. I'm, I'm part of the site. I actually, it, it's a different kind of site. You submit photos. Um, and then a group of screeners look at them um, and then decide whether they should be published or not. It's sort of elitist in a way, but the people who do the screening, um, well, this is going to sound arrogant because I'm one of them, um, but do, we, we all sort of know what a really, really great picture is on a technical and emotional level. Yeah, that, that's it that's right there. Thank one, you, one that come. No, yeah. Interesting. Um, just just amazing pictures by amazing photographers all over the world. And every year they take the best, the, the two owners, Ralph and Jacob, take the best pictures that they think were produced during the year um, and put them into a book. Um, mm -hmm. And the one from last year, actually, I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not, but um, that wow. same picture got mm -hmm. on the cover of it, uh, which was pretty cool considering... You know, Peter Kemp is in this book. Uh, it's a who's who of who are the upcoming photographers uh, in the world. Uh, and uh, so that was pretty neat. And it just goes to show that sometimes, you know, like uh, Angela Bacon Kidwell is on this site all the time. And if you know her work, she is just, just so brilliant, it's scary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, I see your, your image here. Right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it just, just, just amazing stuff. So... Um, it just goes to show that sometimes um, really um, just things that happen can produce really great effects. Now, if I had gotten that finger to go into that glass um, the way I wanted, 
might have just produced a pretty mediocre image, really, when you got down to it. Uh, yeah. But just messing around and having some fun uh, actually produced something pretty cool. Uh, so I, I'm sort of I'm sort of proud of that image. Uh, the the lighting um, is uh, just sort of dramatic. The side lighting is what made it. It sort of gives it that 3D effect, that, mm -hmm. that red spew coming off the side uh, on that black background sticks out so well uh, and, and really gives it a, a, a lot of depth. Uh, and uh, that was planned. I will take credit for that one. But uh, as for that thing actually looking like a face, um, I don't think you could plan that in a million years. Yeah, it's interesting. For me, I, I just I've seen it. I thought it's uh, really like you broke with bullet or something, and I almost seen the pieces of glass there. But well, there's that? actually one piece of glass sort of hanging yeah, out of yeah, the uh -huh. mouth, uh, if you will, right. uh, that was just sort of sitting there. And I think that's what really helped it. That's what sort of diverted the liquid to go so harshly off to the yeah. right. Mm -hmm. If that was a hole, it just would have dropped. Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, once again, I didn't plan that. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, but if you want, uh, as far as splash shots go with me, that's probably my best, I'd guess. I've got another one called Explosion that um, I dropped a, uh, a, a, a glass paperweight onto a glass filled with red liquid. Um, and it hit the glass and sort of flew off to the side. But the liquid that was in the glass sort of adhered to the sphere for some reason, uh, mm -hmm. and I don't know why. But it looks like this red molten ball just sort of shooting out, and uh, yep. that that's and there's glass flying everywhere, and that was a cool picture. That, that and you, was you, and you got cracked. Cracks on the glass, right? Where oh yeah, yeah. Now that came from when I was just so heating it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you know, the uh, regular wine glasses, as Ron and I talked about last week, um, or the week before, I forget which one, Ron, uh, um, it, this stuff doesn't take heat at all. Uh, it, well, it takes heat okay, but when the second it starts cooling down, it just cracks and breaks. There's, there's mm -hmm. nothing you can do about it. So, um, definitely fun to play with, though. Can be really, really dangerous. I burn myself a lot of times playing with this stuff. Uh, you know, he... Glass is an amazing conduit for heat, and even though you're heating one area, the heat goes all through the darn thing, and I've got the scars on my fingertips to prove it. Yeah. But uh, but a fun shot, an absolutely fun shot. Fun shot, yeah. W or I guess it was uh, speed lights, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Back then, that was all speed lights. There was one... Um, there was one behind the plexiglass, once again shooting on the usual shooting stage that I always shoot on. Mm -hmm. um, there was one underneath... Uh, both of them had blue gels, and then there was one off to the right. I think they were all 430 EXs, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and and the one off to power? Uh, probably, my guess would be an eighth. Um, yeah. It might have even been a sixteenth to stop it the way that stopped. Yeah, I think it's, it's, there is no motion blue even on the smallest dro no. droplets. No, there, there's, there's absolutely deep. none. So my guess yeah. is probably a sixteenth. Um, uh, but, you know, one thing that really helped me, for, for anybody who shoots with speed lights, there's this guy out there named David Honnell. His last name is spelled H-O-N-L. Mm -hmm. And he makes all these great attachments um, for speed lights. Um, he has grids that you can attach to the front of them. You know, uh, there, there's a quarter inch and an eighth inch grid I think he makes. And I think it, that pretty much boils down to a 20 degree and 40 degree with studio lights. Um, he makes all sorts of filters that you can put over them. Um, and that's where the blue came in that shot. They were the gels from David Honnell. And, you know, I don't have anything to do with the guy. I've never talked to him. But his stuff is great. He makes snoots, um, barn doors, you name it. He makes it all for speed lights. And it's all attached with Velcro. So it's really, really cool. David, what's his name, you said? Uh, Honnell, H-O-N-L. Yep, I found him. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to put this information on the blog when I post Yeah, if, if you shoot with speed lights, this guy is great. He's really just wonderful. Uh, he, he thinks of us um, and our needs uh, when, when you use speed lights. That we're not just, you know, put, take a speed light out and, you know, throw some form of a diffuser over it. Um, he decided to take it and just make stuff for it. 
And his snoots are really cool because they're um, they're like uh, I I want to say fabric, but not really. Maybe fabric wrapped around cardboard mm -hmm. that you can sort of fold around the speed light and set how wide you want it or how narrow you want it. Really great stuff. And when I found that stuff, it really opened. Yeah, there there's his sight. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you look at the top right there, it's a little bit blurry, but those are the grids uh, that you can throw in. It. Yeah, and that's him holding mm -hmm. them right there. Uh, and just, just it really, it'll open the world up for you with speed lights. Um, with his stuff, there really isn't anything um, I don't think I, I can't do uh, with speed lights that I, uh, I can do with my Einsteins. Yeah, uh, it looks like it's interesting stuff. You see, I, and it costs, well, $30 for that set of grids, which is pretty good. Yeah, when you consider, you know, a set of what a set of grids cost you for, you know, uh, just just regular studio lights, you know, it, it's invaluable. It, it really is. Um, uh, really allows you to do so much. Um, I was really happy when I found that stuff, and I just happened upon it. I didn't even read about it somewhere. I I was doing a search. I didn't even know what a grid was when I did a search for that, that stuff, mm -hmm. as embarrassing as that is. Um, and, and that came up. I did a search for um, grid speed light, and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and that, that came up. And, boy, I ordered, I think, everything he makes that night. Uh, great set of gels, uh, really cool. They react to the speed lights really well. Um, nice stuff. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. That's great. Thank you, Dave. Yeah, thank you for this info. I've seen them before, but never on the original source. Yeah, I would say. Okay, uh, anyone have questions for Dave about that image? Uh, okay, I guess it's my turn. I've got them all quiet, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see who we got? Zach Arias here. Hey, Zach. Glad to see you. Okay, so let me show the... Zach, I don't Hi, think Alex. we can hear you. Hey, Alex. Oh, oh there Alex. you are. There you are. Oh, I think you're just yeah. not talking to us. I had the mute button on. So. Oh, okay. Okay, how are you doing tonight? I saw you guys hanging out, and I've never uh, never met Alex before. Just to... Yeah, yeah great to see Yeah. I think my internet connection sucks too much. <laughs> it's a little bit noisy, but yeah, we can see you. Uh, okay, so this is my image. It's pretty old, I guess, uh, but I still like it a lot. Because uh, it was interesting story uh, behind it. I had I have it on the blog, but again, I'm not sure how many people read. I mean, read blog before uh, before Google Plus, so. <laughs> I guess I can talk to you about. It was an assignment. Uh, the guy, uh, his, his name Dog, uh, he was doing many custom-made, uh, interesting kind of creative stuff from those lands uh, to some sculpture. Very interesting. And he needed uh, shots for a website. Basically. Alex, lost your sound. Is Zach, is that you feeding through? Yeah, I think some noise. Yeah, we've got some noise coming through somewhere here. I don't know. I'm trying to turn mine off. Because <laughs> everyone's talking. everyone's talking. Okay, it sounds better now. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, background noise is gone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you never know. <laughs> so what I was saying, uh, the client needed on the uh, tough and white background uh, for website just regular product shop, and uh, we did this. I don't remember, maybe like ten different products for him, and this lamp was one of them. And I just liked the product. I liked the look of it, and uh, uh, when. We were done, and he left. He took everything back from uh, out from the studio. Next day, I called him and uh, asked if I can shoot this lamp alone. Just no money involved. I just want to shoot it, if it's possible, just on creative shot. So 
So he agreed, he came, and we had some really nice time shooting this the way I want, because on the white background, this stuff is, uh, was not really interesting. So it was, uh, let me show you the lighting setup. Uh, yeah, here it is. No, that's not it. Is. No. <laughs> So, as you see, uh, it was in uh, glass and uh, light, one light behind, uh, some all lights around, uh, plus uh, light for the background. Nothing really special, but what was interesting is how, to, how we got those LED. It was LED, the, uh, those lamps, it was LED lamps, and uh, he wanted to show that it's actually the real color when it's turned on. So we got it in, in one shot. Uh, I don't know if you read it or not, but let me ask you just guys. Do you know how to shoot it with strobe lights, but to get that LED working? It's pretty low light, low power comparing to strobe. So how would you shoot it in one shot? Yeah. I shoot it in two shots. In two shots, yeah. What about one shot? How do you shoot it one shot? Well, then I'd uh, like to paint it. No, it's, it's coming Here's from inside, right? Long shutter speed? Yep, exactly. Long, long shutter speed. Uh, because we shutter speed doesn't affect uh, flash lighting at all, right? I mean, if it stays within uh, X sync for the camera, it doesn't matter, right? Is it like one second? If it's dark outside, I mean, in the studio, or one and two hundred seconds. So I just put, like, uh, I don't remember exactly how it was, but maybe, like, uh, half a second or so. Basically, ex exposure, we got it dark here. <laughs> exposure, uh, perfect for, to get that LED. And then I turned it all lights in the studio. Uh, modeling light, everything. Even monitors were turned on, off. And then I got this shot with flash firing, and the rest time, when shutter was open, for that half a second, we got light from the LED, from that lamp. So did, did you turn the power of your flashes down for this, Alex, or? No, no, Fl flash was the uh, same power as whatever it was, let's say, 100 bytes per second. Right. But because we get long exposure, we get that shot flash, right, which right. was exposed, uh, the stand and everything, like, like this. And let me show you how it was, if I have it, without, uh, yeah, this is how it looked like without uh, LED with shot flash duration. No, 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 it's one of the sounds. So I don't have it, I, don't, I can show you, but it was close to this. Right. No light coming from the lamp. But when we got long flash duration, flash with high power. Because you see, only aperture affects flash, not uh, the shutter. Right. Right? If we leave, uh, leave let's say, flash uh, power untouched, if we change aperture, it will affect the picture, right? It will be brighter or darker. But if you change, let's say, from 1 of 200 seconds to 1 of 100 seconds, Nothing is going to change if flash power stays the same, right? Right, right sure. It's, it's, it's just much shorter than that or one of two hundredth of a second. So here it was just long exposure with the same settings for everything. And it was fun. Actually, I got this setup similar. I can do a little demo <laughs> as usual. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm sort of intrigued by the lighting on this one, Alex. I mm -hmm. see you've got the beauty dish underneath it, um, right. which is a really cool idea. Um, I've never shot with a beauty dish. Um, so uh, what, do you, what does a beauty dish add um, that just, say, a normal flash wouldn't, with just, say, some form of a soft box on it or something like that? Well, for this, for this particular uh, shot, 
it should, I mean, I used Duty Dish only because I had this big uh, grid in it. You see, it was Duty Dish plus right. grid. Sure. So I, I need uh, basically the, what I had, the small grid for, uh, for regular uh, pulse above uh, reflector, but it was too small. I need something controllable, still not too much spread of the light. Right. And uh, that's why I use Beauty Dish. But usually Beauty Dish is good for portraits kind of thing, because for product, well, like if you put it directly under or directly on top of the subject, it may look good, but everywhere outside, it just throws those reflection, circular reflection, which is not, usually it's not good on the product. So I use it mostly for portraits. Right. And because I don't shoot portraits, I don't basically use it <laughs> for, <laughs> for many, many months. It's still hanging there. Ah, oh, somebody. Okay. Guys, I need to mute somebody. It's typing a little bit loud. Maybe. Um, so, I don't know. Are we going to do a little demo? With oh, yeah. Much, yeah. much easier uh, setup. Not, not exactly like this, but I can show you. Can you do something similar to what you have here, though, where you did a long exposure? Uh, no, no. I, I, I can do it. I mean, I can, but it will be too much uh, right. to turn so lights off here and, you know, to play. And it will be a disaster, I know. Because <laughs> uh, I cannot do this uh, like that. But here is what I have. Let me make sure you see it. Well, you kind of see it. Uh, I have, well, I have my Canon back, which is good. I have glass on the holder. That's it. That's how it, it holds here. Oh. And, yeah, it's, it's, it's actually a great holder for anything we can have. Yeah, what somewhere. holder is that? Uh, if there's one thing I lack in my studio it, it, that you've got these great things for, it's clamps to hold stuff. I mean, I'm jury rigging things with C clamps, and it's it's just a night. And after four shots, everything comes falling down. And um, yeah, yeah, I learned it uh, hard way, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, it was too expensive to have, uh, you know, cheap uh, clamps because. I lost so many stuff. So this is, uh, it's on one of my wish lists on BNDH. I will post, again, on the blog, I will post the link to that wish list where you can get it. That would be great. Basically, I appreciate that. Yeah, you see, it's like two uh, similar connectors here, and uh, right. here you connect it to the stand. Right. And here it's same thing, but instead of but it has this clamp. Oh, a sandwich, yeah. Right. So you can clamp anything here. Oh, I've got to get a bunch and of those. Yes, basically, <laughs> it's, it's perfect like this. It's very, and I, you can hold the table with few of them. You can hold uh, some light. For example, I got those LEDs, which I'm working on for jewelry project do it yourself, right? right? And this, this is crap. It's not. Right. I just use it to show uh, the kind of the cheapest way to do it, but it's, it's a crap. I got it here. I can clamp it. Oh, okay. Things, and it sits perfectly. It's just like professional light. I can do whatever I need with it. With this thing. So. Oh yeah, if you could put that list up, Alex, I'd appreciate it. That yeah, would yeah. be awesome, man. So I got this. Uh, I just want to show you uh, how the bottom light, even one single light source, can can do relatively cool stuff uh, for a photographer. So the light is behind, right? It's three box uh, on the Einstein, but we can have basically any kind of lights. What I like with strip box because it's kind of spreading on the sides. So I'll show you why, why I need it <laughs> in, in a few moments. I'm going to turn it on. And okay. Uh, 
Okay, it's working. And the only problem I have uh, that I don't have that nice subject. So I'm going to use just whatever I have laying here, and we'll see. I didn't do much uh, preparation. Basically, I didn't do any preparation. So we'll see how it how it will go. Uh, let me share my Lightroom. In a moment. Okay. Okay, this is me and this is Lightroom. And we got tethered capture. And what I have here is well, let's say simple thing like this, right? I got in there. Hundred millimeters macro. Uh, the camera is ISO 100, one of so two hundred of a second. Uh, Shutter speed f9, nothing really special. And if you got the shot, um, so one light source, it's on the bottom. You don't see basically anything because it's only from the bottom. See what happens if we just simple put, uh, let's say, piece of cardboard right here on top and a little bit on front of it. Well, you don't see it, probably I need to move it a little bit, just a moment. I'll move myself like this. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I guess any subject will work, but the best for this kind of stuff is something semi-transparent, like my little glass of beer. <laughs> yeah, it's non-alcohol beer. I'm wondering why they check an ID if it's non-alcohol beer. Every time I buy it, they're asking for ID. And nobody can answer me why. I mean, because uh, if I'm not mistaken, even with non-alcohol beer, there's still a touch of alcohol in it. Like in kefir or maybe yogurt. Yeah. Still maybe, but nobody's that. <laughs> yeah, you know, you get a good bottle of vanilla extract and you can get hammered off it. So, you know, there's, there's alcohol in a lot of stuff, man. Yep. It says less than half percent, though. So. Yeah, yeah. So, you see the idea... Uh, this is beer, right? And uh, nothing really special, but again, it looks cool with only one light source and with uh, one, uh, uh, how do you call it? The reflector. Piece of foam core. Yeah, yeah piece of foam, foam core. And uh, I have another reflector which is uh, more like uh, arc all right. around, and it will work for many, many, many other stuff which. You know, you know but, but lighting from the bottom is, is uh, I see a lot of pictures on the internet. I, I look at a ton of them. Like I said, I'm involved in that website, so I'm looking at pictures a lot of hours of a day. Um, and I notice a lot of the time I'm always saying to myself, gee, I wish there was some light from the bottom. Gee, I wish there was some light from the bottom. It's forgotten a lot um, because uh, of a lot of the limitations that people think they have. Uh, most people will shoot studio shots on, like, some solid surface. So getting light mm -hmm. from underneath it is, of course, impossible at that point. Um, I, I was lucky enough to find shooting tables and shooting through glass early enough in my career to sort of understand how important that light can be. Even just a really soft, soft touch of it uh, can add, um, you know, like in that shot you have right there, Alex, there's this wonderful little white part right in the bottom of the glass, which, which just sort of adds depth uh, mm -hmm. to, to the shot itself. Um, so, so lighting from, uh, you know, left, right, 
um, in front, behind, on top, everybody seems to get. It's the part about getting it from underneath that can really add so much detail to a shot that I appreciate so much um, and is lost on a lot of people. It, it really is. Yep. Oh, you let's you know, especially in my world, you know, I'm, I'm not a commercial shooter. Uh, I wouldn't, I would honestly, if, if somebody came up to me and wanted me to shoot a commercial shot, I'd probably be lost. Um, but in, the, in the, the art world that I shoot for, that's really lost because that's really a commercial talent. You know, un understanding how to light a product great um, is, is sort of a lost art in the art world. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I was just lucky enough to stumble onto it, but it, it really does help, and it's helped so many of my images. Any picture I have with a great reflection, you generally comes from lighting underneath it, um, mm -hmm. either either bouncing behind it or in front of it, um, and it, it's really helped me a ton. Yeah, that's that's great. Great stuff. You see, I put the white uh, just piece of plastic underneath. Underneath it, and it's like shooting table uh, with uh, lights coming through it, right? Right. Let me do this. This that thing on top. Well, besides the fact that we have uh, something on top, it just look well. We need to drop something now. <laughs> okay, let me drop something and we will we'll be done. Okay. <laughs> I didn't and plan the shot it, grows. <laughs> it just continues to grow. <laughs> By the time we're done, ladies and gentlemen, he's going to have eight lights, a whole, <laughs> no. a whole water setup going. No. I can see it coming. No, I, okay, let me try to drop and we'll be done. You can talk about something else a little bit. Oh, oh there. I need to have a drop, so I got a drop. <laughs> Where is my drop? It's coming. Uh, yeah, we need to have something. Uh, it, it's supposed to be a uh, reflector on top, obviously, because of the drop. Yeah, sure. Uh, but, you know, it still looks cool, that uh, cap. Oh, bottle cap. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> In, <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, let me show it down. Just a little demo. The only thing I don't like about Einstein is that the loud fans. It just more time passing by, more they scream at me. What what bothers you about him, Alex? Uh, I didn't the hear the, the fan fan. The Einstein. They know it. Oh yeah. My my how's my sound? Is it oh fine. Crappy? No, sounds fine. fine. That's fine. Okay. Okay. Just, Jenny just said that it's too kind of deep, or I don't know. But I'm trying. So are you still trying to talk her into yeah. getting on camera here, Alex? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and. Uh, you remember that email, Dave, I sent you uh, earlier? Right. I got this idea about uh, what we can do uh, on that Hangout to make it more interesting. Sure. Let's, let's do uh, kind of assignments for anyone, not only for those who are watching it and join it, or um, anybody can, can do the shot which we kind of get assigned. And uh, next week, uh, we can uh, go through the images uh, people will send, will send us, and we can critic or at least talk about what can be improved, if anything can be improved, so some kind of interaction. Plus, uh, I'm planning to do that shot, that assignment, during the Hangout, my way. Obviously, it's like a uh, photographer will have a uh, lot of freedom how to shoot it. Because, for example, I have this idea, let's say, for next uh, next Wednesday, Wednesday, let's have assignment to shoot bottle of wine, red wine, kind of creative way. Because if we go to any store, you see those images of bottle of wine, usually it's pretty simple, pretty kind of 
Not it's a bottle of wine. Yeah, it's just a bottle of wine. You see this soft box on one side because it's white line through bottle, and uh, you may see a little soft box or some some light from another, and that's it. Sure. Let's think how we can shoot that bottle still representing the product, but uh, some kind of interesting way. Oh, I'd so. love to do that. That'd be great. Yeah, and then we can, I mean, we can decide. You can do it or I can do it. We'll talk uh, later behind the scene about who will be doing it for, for the cloud. But. And again, let's do like this. I do one next week. You, you'll assign. You'll do assign. Oh, okay. So Sounds good. Cool. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Now, so, what, you yeah. guys into that? I mean, would be something you'd all be sort of like <laughs> trying? Yeah, fine. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, nice. I, I, the idea is, to, you know, to we, we all uh, like uh, entertainment. We like to see it and watch. Let's try to learn something. But you really can learn by doing. If you see the stuff we're talking about, you you won't learn really too much if you won't do anything. So let's try to do something, right? Yeah, and also let's and be honest about it too. You know, uh, uh, you, the, the internet's a wonderful, wonderful thing. And, and I love it so much, but um, learning from the Internet has always been hard when you're relying on, you know, photo.net, photosig, wh whatever site you're on, which is just a bunch of wow, you're great kind of sites. And I never learned crap from any of them. Um, the, the only time I've ever learned is from friends of mine who would look at a picture that I took and looked at it and said, wow, that's bad. Um, you know, throw that away immediately and try again. Um, you know, there's that 10 minutes of my feelings are hurt, but, you know, after that I'd look at it and say, yeah, you know, Mike was right, this is really bad, and it made me go and try harder and try to get better um, and learn from others' op opinions. You know, I might choose something and Alex will look at it and say, well, you know, why don't you try throwing a light here or why don't you try moving that there? And uh, that, I always appreciated that stuff, and, and it's the only reason I've gotten some form of understanding of what I do. So um, I'm not saying we come in and just, you know, we be Siskel and Ebert about everybody's pictures, but if, if we have good ideas to throw into it, let's do it. Um, let, let's make this a real learning tool that, that we all can benefit from, you know. That, you know God, maybe 20% of what I shoot is really good. The other 80% is okay. Um, and could it could really benefit from somebody saying, you know, Dave, why don't you put that away and try a little bit harder? Uh, so, and, and I appreciate that from people who I respect. So um, I, 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 I'm excited about this, and I'd really like to see it happen uh, because I think it would be fun to see what all of our take would be on any given subject. Right, and, like, we need not only... Oh, Guys, when you will be sending uh, your results, uh, let's say, at least by Tuesday next week, uh, put some work of what you are trying to achieve, uh, not just image, because sometimes uh, you are moving towards some destination which you know you, on, you only know and will be trying to critic without having any idea of what you are trying to get. So always put a uh, few words about... Uh, what was the idea? Now, Alex, where yeah. where will those pictures go? Um, will we just post them on our pages and maybe include you and me in them in the description? Put our name in them somehow so we'll know they're out there. Oh well, I think uh, on the blog I have this upload functionality. You can attach anything, like on Master and Splash, for example. People submitting right. their work. I can do it on uh, Akil Studio blog, uh, so it will be like post dedicated for the next oh, okay. Uh, event. Okay, awesome. And awesome. people will be, we will post links everywhere uh, so people can submit their images with text, with, so we'll know who submitted, when. Right. And we'll just go through that list. Yeah, and like I said, I'll be trying to do something for next Wednesday and I'll show how, I mean, I'll do Hold. You know, your, your, your selection of a, a bottle of red wine is, is sort of strange right at the moment because I just bought a bunch of stuff to do a shot with a bottle of wine. Um, and, and everybody, we did not talk about this before. Mm. It's oh, just really? a matter of happenstance. So uh, wow. <laughs> um, I just happen to be ready for this one very well. Uh, so 
Um, hopefully, I can pull off what I want to do in my mind. So. It wow, this be, is great, Beth. Yeah, I, do, I have an idea. Be, it should be a mess, um, but it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, that's cool. are, are you drinking your prop, Alex? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Alex, you'll set something up on your blog for us to, to submit our photos to? Yes, yes. It will be a post uh, where you'll say, okay, guys, next Wednesday we'll have... Uh, uh, that uh, hangout and the assignment for that hangout is bottle of red wine. So everything I, I said, I will put on the post. And uh, in the comment area, it will be the way to attach. I think you can attach right now. Yeah. There is upload image. You click and you upload. Just make sure don't uh, don't attach the highest resolution, the full resolution. Yeah. It may work, but it will be hard to. I mean, it won't look good. So you probably like eight, 800, 800 pixels JPEG. 800, up to 1,000 1, wide oh, okay. will be fine. Good, good. Will people also be able to upload uh, like shots, how they set up, how they set up? Yeah, yeah. It, it can be multiple images. So you can upload the result, you can upload the intermediate result, set up, everything. More you upload is better because we can discuss it more. For example, you got your shot and you upload lighting setup, and we will see and it will be easier to kind of Suggested, for example, oh, you know, you did this way, but uh, you can easily do that way, and it will, I mean, it will be much more productive, right, if you have uh, light and setup. Yeah, I'll, de I'll definitely include a setup shot with it. A absolutely. That's cool. Okay. So, yeah, it will be interesting. I hope to grow to something, like, not only entertainment, but that Hangout should be some really good education also. And where we can try new ideas, uh, then share our well outcome and process and that kind of stuff. And and really, you know, I I've seen a few other hangouts now since we've been doing this, and you know, a lot of them are okay. The person holding it will get on and do what we've been doing. Talk about what we do. Um, you know, a lot of HDR uh, hangouts are out there. Is this is how you mm -hmm. process them and everything? I don't think I've run across one yet, and I'm sort of limited, so maybe there are some out there. That, that sort of say, okay, let's all do an assignment. Let's all, you know, okay, the client has suggested that this is what they want. Let's go out and shoot it. Um, and then let's all get together and talk about everybody's pictures next week, not just ours. Uh, yeah. You know, every, everybody in this group, a lot of the people I see at the bottom of my screen right here have been here with every one of them. Um, yeah, so and even more, no, not only people who, who are with us right now. It yeah, can sure. be anyone just who seen this hangout uh, in recording and then just submit the uh, image and we still can look at it and drop a few words and maybe suggestions. So it's, it's not limited by only those who uh, join it. Because I have only like 120 or so people in, in that circle hangout. But still, I think our audience is much, much larger. Than this. Yeah, I know, I know a lot of people who aren't in our circle who go and watch your videos or watch our videos um, who who aren't even on Google um, that, that you know just sort of know me through word of mouth you know through friends that kind of thing so uh, yeah anybody submit a picture and we'll talk about them and I think it'll be great to get so many varying opinions um, on because I th see things different than Ron Ron will see things different than Alex I mean it'll be um, it, it, it should be really cool. Uh, I, I'm really jazzed about this idea because I don't know of anything else out there that does it. I really don't. That's cool. I think it's a great idea. And then just getting the critiques, you know, that, that helps too. Well, yeah. you know, I taught at Brian Peterson's uh, PowerPoint or Picture Perfect School of Photography for about three or four years. Um, and Brian's a great guy. And, and basically, people were coming on just to pay for a critique of somebody they respect. And they were paying big money for it, too. I mean, it was, it was a lucrative time in my life online. Um, but uh, it, 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 it's not out there. It's just, you know, you can ask for all the honest critiquing you want from, from some of your favorites or your peers. But it's very hard to get because people don't like being honest half the time. Um, and from from doing it for three years, I'm I'm pretty honest. Um, I'm not disrespectful or anything like that. But I tell you what I like and what I don't like. Um, and I've had I had students come right back and tell me, you know, this is really what I saw and what I wanted to do. 
And I'm like, great. You know, that's you have my respect for it. That that's fine. Um, but uh, I I think it'll be great to get a group of people like this who are seasoned pros at what we do. Um, uh, just hearing what everybody thinks about what we're doing. It's, it's just a great idea. It really is, and hopefully it'll bloom. Yeah, it will. We'll make it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any, guys, any other questions? We almost got our one hour. No question. I don't know. I brought my uh, the do-it-yourself softbox that I had made. I don't know if you guys wanted to see that. Oh, yeah. yeah oh, sure. absolutely. Yeah. I made this... See, I missed last week's hangout, but the week before that, a couple weeks before that, let's see if I'm far enough away. Mm -hmm. I just made this out of full, it's a strip, I didn't have a strip box. Let's see, am I far enough? Yeah, yep. yeah, sure, yeah. sure. Yeah, I just made this thing out of foam core. I think it's like quarter inch foam core. <laughs> mm -hmm. Cut it up into pieces and glued it together. Okay. What's inside? Do we have any uh, diffuser inside? No, there's nothing inside. I Different. did. I just got a piece of like this, I guess it's nylon or something, some sort of fabric and Perfect. You know, just have a little diffuser on the front. But mm -hmm. yeah, I just you have to cut it specifically for whatever kind of, you know, light uh strobe you have, but it fits right on my strobe. That is awesome. And it works really well. You know, and it's actually more durable than I thought. I just used some those what do they call them? Uh, I got them right here. T uh T pins. Mm -hmm. like oh, I yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I would just poke them into the foam core, hold it, hold it all together, and then I just used Elmer's glue. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this is great. No, wow. I think it works really well, you know. And I've, uh, yeah. mm -hmm. That's awesome, man. So for five bucks, you put together something that you'd have to run out and cost 130 bucks. Totally, yeah, and I, I I even found the foam core on sale over at Michael's, so I paid like two bucks for a sheet. So yeah, it cost me like four bucks. Oh, that's excellent, man. That that really is. That that's great stuff. Yeah, and it's light now. You can uh, even speed light there, right? The yeah. Thing, yeah no. You would need to make. I'd need to make something special, yeah. I guess, to hold a maybe a different piece of um, foam core here and just cut out like the square. Right. Mm -hmm. Sure. Sure. I don't see why it wouldn't work. Yeah. That is excellent, man. <laughs> yeah, the only, the only thing I think the one thing I do want to modify on it, I think I might want to paint the outside black because I think I'm getting you get light spill coming out from the sides. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would probably help focus it to go out the front also. Right, right. You know, that that, that that's awesome. <laughs> I would have never thought of doing that, man. That yeah. is brilliant. Well, I actually anyway, got. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, because well, I, I got inspired by Alex a couple of weeks ago uh, with his uh, homemade strip box, and uh, I made one out of a Pringles can. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. It fits right over my uh, my speed light. Oh, I see. That's sweet. Yeah, you know, you could probably market that. I'm sure the Pringles <laughs> people would probably come after you, but that that is really cool. Well, I, I plan to make a, a snoot too, out of it. Sure. Oh, that's so perfect for a snoot. They 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 fit perfectly on. The, I've got a SB600. They mm -hmm. fit perfectly on it. Wow. Wow, that's nice. Yeah, that's that's much better, much stronger than this one. It's shorter, but yeah, mine is like you can break it easily. But yours is. <laughs> yeah, and actually, the it's already silver lined inside, so. Yep, it's it's ready. It's just cut. It. <laughs> and the 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 light spill is the the gradient is pretty good off of it. I, I have some idea uh, for you guys, uh, if I know, and for you. Uh, you got you use it some kind of nylon, right, uh, as a front. Uh, Diffuser, but because you don't have uh, additional diffuser, which is in in big in soft boxes uh, from policy buffer or almost any soft boxes, there is a different additional diffuser, right? So it it gets uh, really diffused uh, uh, light on the front element because on yours will be more like a gradient feeling, brighter uh, on the spot on the middle and then follow of the light. What can be improved? Let me show you. <clears throat> I think it's 
again, it's just an idea. I didn't try it. But you know this frosted, they call it frosted something. I forgot <laughs> the name. It's oh, uh, it's like styrofoam, right? Yeah, yeah, right, right. It's, yeah. it's thick. It's thick right. and it's kind of, it's pure white. It costs, little, I think it's a little bit more. It's maybe like five bucks for that kind of piece. But I think because it's thicker and it's, you know, it's much more like uh, foamy, it will uh, spread, kind of, not spread, but uh, diffuse light maybe better than just n nylon because it's much... Is that the stuff where, like, you can poke, uh, you can uh, you yeah, poke yeah. pins into it? Yes, like exactly, it's yeah. It's very, I can, you see, so much. yeah, I can break it with my I hands. I it's exactly. very, yeah. uh oh Ron's going to grab really something. Like, <laughs> yeah, and you can easily cut, you know, because it's hard, right, you can kind of use it as a base for your mini strip box. You can kind of stick, uh, well, five here, with, again, with that, uh, imagine to use such uh, paper, right, one side white, one side is uh, completely reflected. You can do a little right. stuff around, and it will, no, it still will work. Just, just an idea. It's so you think it'll <laughs> diffuse the light better than just having this piece of fabric over the front? Right. Yes, yes sure. exactly. Because it doesn't have the middle uh, diffuser. I see. On the well, I know what you're talking about, like here. Uh, see, I don't know if I can draw it. Here. Right. Like yeah, there's usually stuff. something right in the middle of the box itself. Yeah, I can show you. It's, uh, let me show like you. Right, right here. Yeah. You yeah. Can put a little, exactly. Like a piece exactly. of fabric right there. Yeah, I mean, I've got another softbox, a bigger one. I've got like a, a piece of fabric that goes right in front of the strobe, and then you've got the over one. Well, yeah, it just helps spread the light out. You guys really yeah. put me to shame. I just go out and buy everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's how it is. Okay, perfect. Right. Okay. Right. <laughs> I could do that too. I could also put a piece of fabric yeah, down yeah, closer. Yeah. Okay. Here's, could, yeah. <laughs> Here's two other materials which I have found that work really well. They're both basically, I don't know if you can get them up. So you can see them, but oh yeah, oh yeah, look at that. They're foam core board, so they're plastic. Oh they're yeah. but they're just like cardboard, but they're plastic. Mm -hmm. And this is plastic. they sell this stuff for a dollar for a sheet four times this big. It's the stuff they make all the political signs on. They go on the uh, lawns, right? That's the board they print political signs on. Oh okay. And then okay. you also this, and that's a pure white, and it looks like it's totally opaque. I don't think I have a yeah. I have a little little light here, tiny one, but you can see that it's still... You oh, see, wow! Mm -hmm. And it really spreads out the light really fast. And so this works pretty well. And they sell a second variety, which is this variety, and this variety is actually translucent. And so it's also the same foam core, but it's translucent. This I can only find at art supply places. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it, it really puts a lot more light through. And I use both of them, and sometimes I put one in front of the other when I want to spread the light into it and, and really cut the diffusion, make it more diffuse. And the air gap is what gives you even more and more diffusion. Yep, exactly. So two pieces of this works really well. Yeah, that's even better because it's less expensive, and uh, I think it's lighter than mine, and it's stronger because yeah, I can easily break that style. style yeah, this form. is very strong. Yeah. Well, where can well, you get that stuff? Uh, any, you, if you want to pay the, the maximum price, mm -hmm. it's $5 for like a 20 by 30 sheet. You can get it at an um, um, art I supply place. Know. But if oh, you just okay. go to, I get it online. I can get it, you can get it at Amazon. But I, I buy it 25 sheets at a time because I teach some classes and I use it in the classes. Oh, okay. the, and, and I get them for like 99 cents a piece when I buy them 25 at a time. Oh, so, yeah. I mean, it, the, the pure white one... Any, any sign store in your town that makes political signs, just tell them you want sign blanks. You want white sign blanks. They'll, they'll probably sell them to you for a buck and a half a piece because they're making a big profit of that margin. Wow. Uh, a good idea. Yeah, it's you, great. You, I got to say, you guys amaze me. You, you, you just do. I thought putting a sock over a speed light was a big deal to get some diffusion. But you guys are like building your own boxes, and that's just wonderful. It really is. I'm learning a lot here. This this is this is good, you know. Um I, I think the kind of lights that you guys are creating and boxes that you're creating um can offer like something different. Uh you know, I can go out and buy a strip box and it'll be the same one that Alex buys and everybody out there. Um so it will all give the same result if used the same way, which we basically use the same way. 
But with all these different materials, you're probably getting a different sort of effect on it. Um, oh, sure. And and I, I I really should start working on that a little bit more. And I think you guys are going to inspire me to do that. Actually, uh, you know. Uh, get out my ingenuity a little bit. Now, I'm the kind of guy, I can't nail two pieces of wood together without hurting myself or ruining the two pieces of wood. Um, but uh, I'll rely on you guys to help me. Uh, Alex was the first one I really ever saw. It said, okay, I took like this stuff and I put it together and I made this like tube thing and light came out of it. And I'm like, why? Why would you do that? But then I saw the results. So uh, um, I, re I really have to start getting into this more because I think I'm always looking for something that makes my images look different from everybody else's. That, that's always my goal. And I think lighting that you create yourself or different forms of lighting and maybe transforming them a little bit through one of these things that you guys are creating um, will create a different effect. And I think that means a lot. I really do. Flexibility, yeah. It's, it's a great flexibility. I love all the strips professional boxes, soft boxes, strip boxes, but I cannot cut it uh, in half or I can, cannot make it uh, right. kind of shape like this. But with this stuff, I can, for specific shots, for specific product, I can cut it the way I need and I can leave it and it looks, you can do this stuff off the shelf. Like. Well, Alex, I, watched, I, I saw on your blog, I think it was last week you posted something on, it was a vodka bottle with a martini glass. And what you had done is almost surrounded the whole thing with, with black foam core and used a strip box like this, but you had like just like a couple inches of a gap that you put in front of it. So yes, right, yep. very narrow strip of light that you allowed through it. So you took this normal 10-inch wide and made it, you know, really, really mm -hmm. narrow. So yeah, yeah, it will work. Actually, you know, you remember I did this. Uh, to mimic uh, strip box, and I got almost the same shot uh, of okay. the bottle. So it was, yeah, it was just funny thing. And you know, uh, I just, it just reminded me how to shoot uh, stuff. Uh, I had this bottle on the black background, and I remember how I was playing with strip boxes on both sides because it was the idea: uh, clear bottle on the black background, so we need to have only thing uh, all around on the edges. And I was putting uh, strip boxes, screens to still have it black. And when I posted first time, one guy, I forgot his name, I have it on the blog. Uh, he said, why did you do this? Why don't you have large strip box behind and the black screen smaller in front? And you know, this one, stri one big soft box right, with right. screen, it basically creates two strip boxes. Yeah, just allowing a little bit of light to come out left and right. Yep, yep, yeah. exactly. And and it was like, oh man, what? Did I would have never <laughs> thought of that. I would have yeah. never thought of that. So it's it's amazing what you can do when you just think different, you know, not yeah. just straight. Think out of outside the strip box, man. Yep, exactly. <laughs> okay, well, um, okay. I think we're done here. Yep. I think we yeah. If nobody has questions, I'm I'm done with my stuff. Time is one hour. Yep. <laughs> All right. So we're we're shooting a bottle of red wine for next week. Sounds good, guys. Yep. Tomorrow I'll put post on the blog, uh, which will be the starting point to submitting stuff or discussing if you need to discuss something because maybe when we start shooting, will something come up. But anyway, a bottle of red wine next week. Uh, submit your images on aqlstudio.com slash blog. Uh, and see you next week. Excellent. Have a good night, everybody. Yeah, thank, thank you for you. coming. Thank you, Dave. Thank, thank, thank you, everybody. Thanks. Thanks. Good night, Alex. Bye.